uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my questions are for Assistant Secretary um, and the Assistant Secretary and, and for the General. Um, we have our men and women in uniform that are now in regions that are severely affected by Ebola. Um, to their parents, to their mothers and fathers of these men and women, uh, do you have every confidence that they have every bit of the equipment and training that they need to be protected, to be safe, and to return home healthy? Mr. Lumpkin. The safety of our service members. The right answer is yes. Is absolutely paramount, and it, while you can never mitigate risk to zero, I think we've taken all the steps to mitigate the risk, so the, my answer is yes. General? Sir, the, uh, the combatant commander and the services are making every effort to ensure that the troops have the proper training and the proper equipment they need for this mission uh, so that they can return home safely. Uh, Mr. Lumpkin, you said in your opening statement that um, uh, if, if infected, if, uh, if someone is, uh, contracts Ebola in country, they'll be returned back to the United States and cared for in a CDC facility. Is that correct? I did not say that in my opening statement. Uh, you mentioned a CDC facility where, where uh, treatment will be given. Um, well, then let me ask a question. Mm -hmm. um, if if uh, somebody uh, come, comes down ill in country, uh, how will be that they'll be care they be cared for? Will they be cared for in country, or will they be returned to the United States? Uh, they will be returned to the United States, but I'll defer to my joint staff, staff counterpart on the specifics. Thank you for the question. So in, to take care of the, the troops in country, there will be two rural two hospitals, one established in Monrovia, one established in Sierra Leone. Uh, the, the medical personnel there will be trained in how to treat uh, Ebola victims if a U.S. uniformed military person is, does in fact contract it. To ask your question whether they will be treated in country or sent home, the answer is obviously both. If they are identified for some reason of having high risk of exposure or if they actually do start to exhibit symptoms, they will be cared for initially in country, and then they will be moved home. If they're asymptomatic, they will do what we call a controlled movement, which will be an individual movement on a DOD aircraft. Okay. Uh, How many aircraft are outfitted to move these individuals out of country in the event that this happens? So for controlled movement, uh, any aircraft can do, because they has, has been pointed out, they're asymptomatic and not contagious at that point. So any aircraft can do four at the present time, the only aircraft that can move the symptomatic patients is the State Department's Phoenix Air contract that you've seen moving the other Ebola. And how many patients can that aircraft hold? We're told, well, that aircraft can, the aircraft can hold one at a time and can do four movements a week at this point. Four movements a week? Yes, sir. Um, is that sufficient? Given the number of uh, Ebola patients that the United States has had in total at the present time, it is sufficient. However, But that's not how are, these ep epidemics work. Right. And so at this time, the Department of Defense has an urgent unstatement that's being worked through the system with Transcom to put together a, uh, a isolation pod that can carry multiple persons for C-17 aircraft. Testing will begin in October, or I'm sorry, uh, development will begin in October, is, uh, testing in December, procurement will begin in January. So in January? Week, January. In January? And how many individuals will be able to be Fif transported? Fifteen at a time. Fifteen at a time. What's the turnaround time for the plane? We're how many movements a week can well, the plane? Well, I mean, we're, we hope to procure a number of these systems so that they can be put on any C-17, so that if we, had a, if we could move multiple C-17s to... So at, uh, at current state, we can deal with, we can take less than 10 people out of country um, in a week's time. If, they're sympt if they are symptomatic. Yeah. So this is not at all sufficient. That's, we don't know if it's sufficient. Current time, we expect we will not be doing direct patient care, uh, and so we anticipate. I understand, that. but it, it, how many how many American troops will we have in the region uh, by the end of the year? In well, what, what's our three, maximum? In, in the vicinity of three thousand. Of three thousand. Yes, sir. Uh, this is very disconcerting. Uh, is it a question of, uh, uh, Mr. Lumpkin? Is it a question of uh, resources? Uh, does Congress need to appropriate funds so that we can actually get uh, more planes, more logistical support here so that we can uh, 
uh, have the capacity if something uh, absolutely horrible happens to our fighting men and women in country? Well, we clearly have an identified requirement, and, and as we develop the capacity, that, I'd like to take that one for the record just to make sure I get you, uh, because I'm not familiar with the acquisition of the process or the actu actual requirements that well, we're Well, I think you place. should get familiar with the acquisition process. If we currently have one plane that is controlled by the State Department, I'm asking the Department of Defense, with the mass number of airplanes, equipment, and training capacity that we have, um, nearly spending uh, nearly half a trillion dollars annually on the Department of Defense. If you need it, we will get it. We will demand it. Because if we're putting these men and women in harm's way, potentially where they can contract Ebola, the idea that we have one airplane as the United States to get these men and women out of country in a safe manner if they contract what is absolutely horrible, which we want to control, which we absolutely want to control, um, the idea that you're coming before us and giving this, uh, this type of testimony uh, raises great concerns. I know you've been asked to do a lot, and I absolutely respect that. But we, we're asking you, in the legislative branch, to tell us what you need, and we will get it. Because we don't want to put our men and women in harm's way without any capacity to care for them. Our veterans, our fighting men and women, deserve the best health care in the world, the best training in the world, and they have it. But it means the proper protocols at the top level are there to make sure they're protected. And if something bad happens, they're immediately taken out of harm's way, cared for, and returned back to their normal state. And with that, Mr. Chairman, um, I, I yield back. I thank the gentleman. We now go to.